All right, Mary, so monarchs, can you give us a little brief life history of the monarchs? Sure. Um, monarchs are a large butterfly that people see often in their gardens, um, and it's really charismatic and colorful, mm -hmm. um, and it has a unique life history, too. It's a migrating butterfly, which there's a few that migrate, but what's really interesting about the monarch is it only migrates um, to Mexico every fourth generation. Okay. Um, yeah. And that super generation, as we call it, lives um, maybe four to six months, where most of the ones that we see are only living a few weeks. Um, so it's a really unique butterfly that unfortunately is uh, in decline wow. in the eastern United States. Um, so what's really important, um, and I think we'll talk about it in just a minute, okay. is how to attract them to your own backyard. Okay. Why the decline, though? Well, the decline is for a couple different reasons. One of it um, is a loss of overwintering habitat in central Mexico due to some illegal logging, uh -huh. um, which we can't do a lot about that. But what we can do is we're losing a lot of what the caterpillars eat, which okay. is milkweed. And so we've lost a lot of that habitat. Um, and also weather can really affect monarchs, too. Um, and so cold winters in Mexico mm. and then during migration can affect them, too. So those are the main reasons okay. why the population Good. has declined. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about the life cycle. Okay. So the life cycle is pretty unique. Um, one monarch butterfly can lay about uh, two to 300 eggs. Wow. And what's really amazing about that, too, is they only lay one egg per leaf. So just one <laughs> wow. monarch yeah. needs a lot of milkweed yeah. to lay the eggs. Um, a few days after they lay the eggs, they hatch and turn into a caterpillar. Okay. And that caterpillar, over about a two weeks time, is going to grow about 2,000 times its original size. And how they wow. do that is they're going to be just eating away at milkweed. And so they go through about five stages or five instars, which is the stage um, in between their molts. And um, they're just eating, eating, eating and getting bigger. Um, and then after about two weeks, they're going to form what we call a J shape. So they're going to find either the underside of a leaf or uh, maybe even a pot or under the eaves of your house. <laughs> and they're going to um, form a chrysalis. Okay. And so a chrysalis is a little bit different than a cocoon. A cocoon is what a moth forms. And a chrysalis is what a butterfly forms. How about that? That's so, so neat. Yeah, so this is a newly formed chrysalis just formed over the last couple of days. This is a monarch chrysalis. And what happens is they undergo a number of changes inside of this chrysalis. And after about 9 to 14 days, they're going to emerge as the adult butterfly. 9 to 14 days. 9 to 14 days. So the whole process from egg to adult butterfly usually takes about a month. Hmm. So this is a really unique chrysalis too, as we were talking about earlier. Most of the chrysalis are really camouflaged. So they're gonna be brown or look like a crinkled up leaf, whereas hmm. the monarch is a little bit different. It's this bright green, it's got some gold accent on it. Um, and just really, to me, it looks like a really nice piece of jewelry. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. It sure um, does. So, that, um, so they're just undergoing some changes inside there and um, turning into a butterfly. Okay. Wow, it's a beautiful butterfly. Yes. Like that. Yeah. Another really unique thing about the monarch um, is that you can actually tell the males from the females. Okay. And a lot of butterflies, there's not much of a difference. But in monarchs, you can tell the difference between the males and the females. And so males are going to have two scent pouches, which are here and here. Hmm. Um, the females do not have those scent pouches. So it's pretty neat. You can tell the difference between the males and the females just by those two black spots there. And that's it? That's it. Yeah, both going to be about the same size, um, both visit um, the same types of flowers, but just those two scent pouches are the difference. Oh, okay. So how do we attract these wonderful butterflies okay. to our garden? I love talking about this because sure. we've lost so much um, habitat. What we can do is we can plant things to attract them in our own backyards. Okay. The number one thing you want to plant if you want to attract monarchs is milkweed. Okay. And milkweed gets its name because if you pull a leaf off, mm -hmm. It has kind of a um, milky sap that comes out. 
And that's actually really important for the caterpillar because it contains a toxin that makes the caterpillar taste really bad to predators like birds. Um, and so that's what the monarch caterpillars are eating. And so we have a variety of different milkweeds here in the Mid-South that do really well. Um, this one here that the caterpillar's on is yes. a common milkweed. Okay. And if you've got the space, this is a great one. Um, it not only serves as a plant that the caterpillars eat, but the adult butterflies will also visit visit the plant whenever it's blooming. Okay. Um, so common milkweed, it does get kind of tall. It can get about five to six feet, but it does get a nice ball, um, pinkish purple bloom on it. Another one, this is a non-native plant, but a lot of people like this one. It's a tropical milkweed. Um, it grows really fast and it blooms um, throughout the summer. The one thing um, you may want to do um, is clip off the flowers in maybe late September, October, mm -hmm. um, and that will um, keep the monarchs moving south okay. um, during their migration. We also have a swamp milkweed, mm -hmm. our rose milkweed, uh, green antelope horn milkweed, uh, butterfly weed. This is one that has the bright orange flowers. It's more low growing. Um, maybe Pretty about colors. two feet. My goodness. Yeah. That's, that's UT orange. Uh, yeah, UT orange. There you go. <laughs> um, in addition to the milkweeds, the milkweeds are going to attract the females to lay their eggs as well as a nectar source. You want to look at some nectar sources, especially fall blooming ones that are going to get monarchs as they're migrating south. Okay. And so some things as they're first getting to Memphis, things like coreopsis, mist flower, yarrow, um, pickerel weed, if you have an, a pond or a water feature. Those are great um, spring blooming ones. And then in the fall, you want to look at things like blazing star, bee balm, mm, okay. um, button bush. Those are all going to be nectar sources. Goldenrod. Yeah, goldenrod. Golden yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the benefit to planting those too is you're not going to just attract monarchs, but you're going to attract a variety of different butterflies as well. Okay. Wow. So growing conditions, full sun? Yeah, most milkweeds are going to be full sun. Um, so if you've got a nice sunny spot, um, some of them do okay in pots. I've grown the tropical in pots before, um, but a lot of them do great in the ground and they're going to come back year after sure. year. Sure. So how many generations again? Well, there's about four to five generations. It starts with the first generation that is migrating um, from Mexico to maybe the Texas coast. And then each subsequent generation moves a little bit further north until they get about to the Canadian border, which is the northern limit of milkweed. Okay. Um, that fourth or fifth generation is a super generation. And that generation is going to migrate all the way down to central Mexico. Um, passing through Memphis, usually we peak in late September, um, early October. All right, well, we appreciate that information again, but I do like super generation. I think that's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again, Mary. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.